Even when we go out of town, we come over rabbit ears pass and we come in here, the heart starts beating. So you have this, this feeling of coming home. We've got the Continental Divide about three miles to the east of us. We have ferns here that don't grow in other places. Uh, we've got elk, mule deer, black bear. We have moose come through our ponds and swim in the ponds. Not sure that I like that, but they do. Um, it's the biggest outdoor gym in the world. Oh, the dogs love it here. Uh, in the summer, one will go swimming all the time, staying cool. They go on all of our hikes. They're part of the family, they're part of the extended family of, of the whole complex. We had this completely contemporary space and all these antiques that go back for generations and um, that was a challenge for us and how to make that kind of come together in a way that it really was meant to look normal and natural. When she started listing off all the things that they wanted to include in their home from families and past generations and her own collections, Bruce and I went home to the office and said, oh my gosh, this is gonna be really challenging. It's easier to go and get everything brand new. That's easy. Mixing in old with the new and creating a new space, that is a challenge. That's tricky. What's so nice about this house is when you walk in, the house does not give up itself in one fell swoop. It unfolds as you enter. Iris actually inspired the Buddha piece right when you walk in. I found a smaller scale of that Buddha and then I tried to research because I fell in love with specifically the expression in that face. Uh, we worked with local artists and we had the whole thing recreated in um, you know, this big, piece that you see when you walk in that makes a statement. They had all of their family possessions neatly tucked away and stored and, and um, they started telling us a story. They're kind of like storytellers. And part of that is really a story about my great-grandparents taking my grandma when she was 10 to the Orient for the first time and they brought some wonderful pieces back and it's just each piece has a story to it. We didn't want any of the pieces to be something that stands out, it just needed to be part of who we are and what made us who we are. Well, it meant a lot to them emotionally, where they came from, where their heart and soul is and, and how they live their lives. I heard that you guys um, asked her, um, you know, which of her pieces were most expensive so that you could put those out in the forefront. Um, <laughs> That's not true at all. <laughs> Who told you that? He is pulling it. Oh my gosh. The entire first room that you enter into, the dining room, with its enormous fireplace to the left, then stretches out with glass, completely surrounding that entire space. The room is so big and grand, and the ceilings are so high that we needed to carry this light fixture down towards the table. Um, this piece had to be light and airy. You didn't want to compete with the view, but um, it had to also come down to the table to create a cozy environment. Basically, there's only a few spaces to display art, and we've done that over the fireplace with some of um, Iris and John's original pelted, painted pieces that we've had framed. The whole house actually, every piece of it is something we either have individually experienced or together experienced. We had a vision, but no idea how to materialize it. And that's where they were incredible and in just making that vision possible and bringing it to life. We came across some Apache uh, shaman that had trained people and had them come out to our ranch in Idaho. Part of the pieces that we have up there are from those ceremonies. One of my favorite things in the family room is when you look through the glass wall into the canyon and you see the outdoors. There's a beautiful dining area out there and hanging over the dining table is a chandelier that is four or five generations old that was from Iris's family. 
the staircase almost feels like it's floating in the air. Um, and that's the part I think that's so fascinating, the roundness, the curve, there is no corner and it's floating. When you go up the stairs, you come to a landing. And at that landing, there's a very large door that opens up into the master suite. In this master space, there had to be a space for the dog, both dogs, and the um, dog door was added in. And outside of the dog door, some of that patio was carpeted as well. Actually, Shadow lays on the side on the floor on Sean's bed and Oslo on the side on the floor on my bed. And then when it's cold in the winter time, that's when our dogs go into their beds. Because <laughs> it's so cold. As we turn the corner away from the master bed and continue on up the stairs, we hit this landing and the, the whole open full glass windows from the floor below to the ceiling. On the landing, we needed some space for our books, so we took them up there and, and we said, okay, we need a workspace for Iris, we need places for our books, and have at it. You'll see a bookcase with a ladder. Adding that piece did add another element, an architectural element. It, it is built in. So when you start adding built-ins into the space, you enhance that interior architecture as well. And that's part of what we do. As we come down the stairs to the basement, to the right there's a little cubicle in there that actually houses some of our ranch memorabilia. As you enter down the hallway before you get to the end of the hall, it changes into a bar feel, very European, lots of stone on the walls and the floors are slate. It's a whole different feel. It's like you've gone back in time. It's a different world. All of these came from her home in uh, Switzerland and Germany. And so that feel we tried to translate into the space. Uh, I really do feel like I'm at home in our family home in Switzerland. The two glass windows that you see in the doors on um, this beautiful cabinet, the glass windows came out of our home in Switzerland and they are actually from a church um, and very, very old. This was um, actually on a part of a original wine barrel. And before we mounted it on the wall, you could actually, when you had the back exposed, you could smell, you could smell the wine still in, in the wood. The little trunk back there with the wine in, in his hand, I don't even know who he is, no idea. I just always loved him in my dad's place and um, nobody really could quite relate to me why I liked him so much, but I do. It's there's just something about it. I feel almost like the presence of four generations are cradling me in this room, if that makes any sense. You should be surrounded by things that represent you, things that you aspire to or things that remind you of where you've been. And, and we really hold true to that. That's important to us in our designs.